Hi witches! So I've been asked this question a lot and I figured I would tackle it in today's video. Um, and those are my top five tips for um, beginner practitioners, people who are new to witchcraft um, and are just kind of learning about the spirituality. So let's just dive right in, right? Um, the first thing that I just really want to tell people is that you do not need to be an expert right away. Oh my gosh, I hear this a lot. Um, and it's okay. It is totally okay to feel like you need to do that. I still like, especially now that I'm kind of like, you know, talking about witchcraft all the time. I definitely get like major imposter syndrome if I'm just like, wait, what does this tarot card mean again? And then I'm just like, oh, you're not a real witch. And it's like, no, you just forgot for a second. There's 78 of them, it's fine. Um, so for context, I've been practicing for almost 12 years. It'll be 12 years in September. Um, so I've had a really long time to read a lot of books and establish my practice um, to the point that it is now. So if you are taking a look at like my Instagram or my social media or anybody's Instagram or social media, just keep that in mind like i've been practicing for a very long time um and i'm still like i'm still definitely not an expert in everything and or anything arguably um so i would say don't be in a rush to like learn you know everything enjoy the journey and enjoy happening upon this knowledge there is no time limit in which you need to learn things or an order in which you really need to learn things though i do recommend learning the foundations and the general terminology of witchcraft and then like some protection magic but that's just me that's just a suggestion i didn't necessarily do that when i was uh first starting and it definitely sucked but um there is really not a structure to this. Now, if you are following a religion, there might be, but as a non-denominational, non-religious, just regular old eclectic witch, um, there isn't really a set path or a set um, series of things that you absolutely need to know. Like no one's gonna come and be like, ah, yes, come take the standardized witch test for your witch's license. Like. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Just have fun with it. And just know that no one's going to be judging you on your knowledge, especially not in my spaces. This is a safe place for everybody to come and learn, um, whether you are 10 minutes into practicing or 10 years into practicing or 100 years into practicing, whatever that might be, we're all here to learn from each other. So no worries, you don't have to be an expert, it's fine. Two kind of goes along with that, um, in that you don't have to put a label on anything. If you are interested in some of the things that we're talking about on this channel, but you're like, I hesitate to call myself a witch. I just feel like this is part of my spirituality. Like I just really love crystals and that. Uh, that's totally cool. You don't have to put any labels on anything at all. We're like, oh, I, I don't know what kind of witch I am yet. And it, it almost seems like people feel like they need to be like, this is gonna sound kind of mean and I don't mean for it to come off this way, but it almost feels like, like we're getting sorted into like Hogwarts houses or something. And I have to pause because as much as I love Harry Potter, that is not reality. You don't have to like define your practice by any way, shape or form or terminology, right? So I like would personally, like I, <laughs> I just say that I'm a witch, like that's really it. I feel like that is a really all encompassing word for what I am and who I, what I am and who I do. That's not right, who I am and what I do. Hello, dyslexia brain, cool. Um, but I, I don't, like I use the term hedge witch and eclectic pagan to describe my practice even further. So when I use the term hedge witch, it just refers to the fact that I am a solitary practitioner. I generally do everything that a green witch does and what a hearth witch does with a little bit of spirit work or deity work mixed in. That's kind of how I, um, as a very short explanation of what a hedge witch actually is, there's much more to it. But um, that is how I would define my personal like physical practice. I'm an eclectic pagan because I work with different deities or worship different deities from pantheons, um, from different pantheons. So it's not just the Celtic pantheon or the Greek pantheon or the Egyptian pantheon, it's all three. So um, those are like my labels, but I feel like I can just sum up who I am and my identity with the title of witch. Um, now, some people really love having those labels, kind of like, oh, I'm a death witch or I am a like demonolater, which is all awesome. I love that. And if you want to do that, more power to you. I think it sounds really fucking badass. So like, hell yeah, dude, do it. Um, but if you're struggling to find that label, don't worry about it. It'll either come to you or you just won't need it and you can practice whatever you would like. Um, I often find that when people kind of like 
put a label on their practice it does box them in into like being like oh i'm a water witch i can only do things with water in my witchcraft like ah uh, um so just don't be afraid to kind of think outside the box with that and don't like necessarily label yourself especially right away when you're first learning about everything so yeah, I, I know I'm, I'm really passionate about that because I just, I felt so marginalized um, and just like alone and like I couldn't step outside my box when I first started practicing. So it's important to me, I'm sorry. <laughs> Number three is to start small. So I love sharing pictures of my sacred space because I have worked really hard to make it look like really, really cool, um, which like I, I, I know that sounds like I'm tooting my own horn a little bit. I think it looks really cool. Like I'm really proud of what I did. So um, <laughs> I, but I do want to remind you guys that again, um, this like witchcraft, all of this is my first love. Like it is something that like, I will just endlessly put money into. It's like witchcraft and like tattoos. Like that's just like what I do, right? Um, which is ironically both of my jobs. But, but to be honest with you, I've only started doing this in a much larger capacity in the last like, couple years here, right? Because I had more freedom and more money because I was an adult <laughs> um, or am an adult. I was an adult. Ah, I've regressed. Um, no, but I, I've only just been able to start doing more of this and have it more publicly and out and open in my last, I would say the last one third of my like practice. For the most part, it's been, it was like very contained to like a very small area. I have a very small altar and then like a lot of stuff that was like shoved behind like books or like hidden in drawers and stuff because I I wasn't able to practice openly for a really long time. Still practiced, just wasn't like openly and outwardly. Um, some witches don't have a whole setup like that. So don't worry about that. If you're like, ah, oh, I can't make an altar right now. It's fine. Don't worry about it. It's not necessary. This also goes for researching and learning things about witchcraft. So I often see new practitioners just being very overwhelmed by the amount of knowledge that is out there. And I feel you absolutely. This actually kind of bleeds into point four as well. Um, so I'm going to kind of combo those, but, um, <laughs> by picking a single topic like I, to read or read about or learn about, I find that is the best thing to do. So let's say you've learned the basics, maybe you've watched a few videos, learned about some of the, the elements, the tools, the terminology, and you're ready to start learning about a specific topic within witchcraft. So instead of picking like astrology and tarot and herbalism and deity work and this and that and this and that, pause. Oh. Now, unless you are literally Hermione Granger, which you guys, you're not, she's fictional. Oh my gosh. Um, that's unsustainable. That's gonna, you're gonna feel overwhelmed and it's, that's just a lot. So um, bleeding into point four, learn about what you are called to do. I do not understand astrology. I kind of understand the zodiac signs, like I get horoscopes and stuff, but beyond that, don't like it. I don't, and like, I don't care to learn a whole lot more, to be honest with you guys. Like, I, I really want to want to learn it, but like, da. There are some practitioners out there who love astrology and like, don't want to deal with deities at all, which is kind of where I really fall into my workings and something that I really like to do. So, so learn what you feel called to learn about. If you're really into herbalism, buy a book about herbalism and then buy another book about herbalism and then buy another one and cross-reference and learn as much as you can from a lot of different people, which leads me into point number five, finishing strong. Apparently all of my thoughts just blend into one. It's fine. Um, but that is seriously to read everything that you can get your hands on. In my 12 years of practice, I've read a lot of bad witchcraft books. I just found some books that like I could find no other information either backing up or just like when cross-referencing, I was like, okay, this is like way out of left field. That doesn't sound right. Or just like straight up incorrect information, right? So by like, I know this is, this is gonna sound crazy, but by coming into contact with some of these books um, or coming into contact with as many books as possible, you'll begin to recognize what you really align with and what you resonate with and what like helps you. All right, the very last minute, my cat decided to join us. So I hope you guys are into that. But um, yeah, just by reading as much as you can get your hands on, you start to validate the information that is out there. Um, and those can be, that information can be kind of a foundation of your practice. Um, so in, by that, I mean, 
mint is associated with money and prosperity and fertility. And that's a generally accepted fact uh, within witchcraft and, oh, okay, she's gone. You'll learn to find those authors who you can trust um, in terms of reading um, information about witchcraft, about their practice. I generally look for books that really have a lot of citations in the back that are not just other witchcraft books, but also academic sources um, or scientific sources. Uh, so just, just as a tip, but by reading as much as you can get your hands on, it's just I feel like knowledge is power. The more information that you can get your hands on, the more information that you have, the better informed you are, the better witch you are. So um, just read as much as you can get your hands on um, and form your own opinions, form your own practice. And yeah, so yeah, those are just some tips from me to you. I hope that these were helpful. If you would like more information or have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and I will see you in the next one. Bye.